This video is sponsored by Bel Air Direct, providing complete car and home insurance solutions. You know what? Better to just walk. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst cars of all time. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? For this list, we'll be looking at depressing, unreliable, or just plain bad rides from all decades. <laughs> to qualify for this list, the cars must have been made with some notion of the mass market, even if that means only a handful actually made it to customers, and must have moved beyond the prototype stage. I average over 22 miles a gallon, sometimes I got as much as 30 with 11 passengers, which is very, very high. Please know that while some of these cars may have sold, or even sold well, they all have one thing in common. They had their downsides. Oh, I found another feature, air conditioning. Number 10, the Eagle Premier. Unturbocharged Eagle talons, even if they lacked go, were at least nice to look at. The Eagle Premier, however, was as dull outside as it was in and suffered from a major identity crisis. Originally designed by AMC in partnership with Renault, the Eagle brand became a Chrysler property when they bought AMC, but many premieres were littered with AMC and even Renault logos. Additionally, Chrysler was forced to drop the somewhat fuel-efficient 2.5-liter inline four-cylinder in favor of a thirsty Renault-built PRV 3.0-liter V6 for contractual reasons. While the premiere did improve as the model went on, its general boringness, poor mileage, iffy electronics, and dash-mounted gear shift won it very few fans. Number 9. The Maserati by Turbo First Generation The by Turbo is a tad quicker off the line. Marketed as a grand touring sedan and arriving at a time when Maserati didn't have the deepest of pockets, the by Turbo was seen as underwhelming. Although it did come with a twin turbocharged engine with an F1 racing pedigree and an innovative three valve per cylinder design, it lacked sizzle. It also lacked build quality, with much of the bodywork and even final assembly being outsourced. By 1984, sales had dropped off, perhaps resulting in the introduction of a new four door option and a slight do over on the dash. This is no ordinary by turbo, it's mine. I've just bought it, and this is what I think of it. But due to the Bi Turbo's general unreliability, it was named the worst car of 1984 by Time magazine. The Bi Turbo got what it deserved because it was an affront to one of the best badgers in the business. Number 8. The Lexus SC430 Given the title of the worst car in the history of the world by James May and Jeremy Clarkson in the Top Gear special of the same name. It is, isn't it? The Lexus SC430 was meant to compete with German rivals like the Mercedes SL, but lost horribly. Priced at $61,000, it was hard to see what you got for your money. Sure, you had a choice of burl walnut or bird's eye maple interior trim and a novel convertible roof the first convertible offering from the brand, in fact. But beyond that, you were left with high maintenance costs, a limp 4.3-liter V8, and a body modeled in part on a yacht. Worse still, it had a terrible ride and handling, with little more than a shelf for a back seat. This, then, is what we think is the worst car all things considered of all time. The Lexus SC. 430. Number 7. The Chevrolet Vega This is the standard sedan. It comes with bucket seats, front disc brakes, and a highly responsive 140 cubic inch overhead cam engine. Built during multiple worker strikes, the Vega's entire development was essentially one big rush job under the direction of GM's Ed Cole. Cole wanted Chevy's new little car on the market within two years but the accelerated design phase meant the Vega never quite got the shakedown it needed. Now you see them, now you don't. Customers themselves were left to find minor and major flaws with the car, the biggest of which was its untested aluminum block engine, which Cole himself was involved in creating. The engine was prone to rattling, overheating, warping, and losing oil in a big way. While over 500,000 Vegas were recalled in 1972 for axle work and bad throttles. But then Vega would have been just another little car. And who wants just another little car? Number 6. The Hummer H2 Check it out, fellas! Arriving on the streets of America just as the nation went to war, 
The H2 and its military-inspired looks were as out of touch with the world around it as a car could be. Getting an obscenely poor 9 miles per US gallon, or 26 liters per 100K according to some sources, the H2 drew the ire of anyone who was a fan of trees or clean air. The Eco Impact was especially notable, as GM, Hummer's parent company, was at the same time repossessing and destroying their electric car, the EV1. Option-wise, the H2 was fairly basic for its $53,000 price tag. Air, cruise, heated and powered leather seats, and a Bose stereo. And unsurprisingly, it was also hard to park on the street, the lot, or even in your own garage. Number 5. The DeLorean DMC-12 Undeniably stylish and firmly etched into pop culture, the reality is everyone's favorite gullwing doored time machine has its share of flaws. Come here! I'll show you how it works! There are minor problems, like the choice to use a windshield embedded antenna that rarely picked up radio signals, to its $25,000 sticker price, which was more than twice the $12,000 the company planned for. Quality was hit and miss given DeLorean's fairly green workforce. While the company faced funding problems and its owner, John Z. DeLorean, faced drug trafficking charges. Meanwhile, the DMC's weight, combined with its wimpy PRV V6, had at best an 8.8 second 0 to 60 miles per hour time, or 0 to 96 kilometers per hour time. Meaning that while Marty McFly might hit 88 miles per hour, he would spend all day doing it. See if you bastards can do 90. Number 4. The Amphicar. Well now, this is awkward. Built in West Germany and rooted in German World War II vehicle Schwimmwagen, the Amphicar was both a lame car and a terrible boat. Although some say it handled relatively well, it was powered by a tiny 1147cc four-cylinder engine with a sad, sad, sad 38.3 horsepower. 770 stands for seven knots in the water and 70 miles per hour on land. While that translated into slow road speeds, it was actually worse on water, where it topped out at seven knots, barely faster than swimming. Additionally, the Amphicar was not really all that waterproof, as it relied on a pump to control leakage and bizarrely used its front wheels to steer, even in water. The motoring oddity did have at least one high-profile owner, as US President Lyndon Johnson owned one. Number 3. The Reliant Robin MK1 Do you think you could push me back on my wheels? Yeah, certainly. Thanks very much. While not the first three-wheeler, the Reliant Robin is the best known, but probably for the wrong reasons. Popular in Northern England because it was cheaper to own and operate, the original Robin topped out at 85 miles per hour or 137 kilometers per hour, did 0 to 60 miles per hour or 0 to 96 kilometers per hour in 16.1 seconds, and had 32 brake horsepower. Although, this lack of speed and power may not have been a bad thing, given its worrisome single front wheel and reputation for rolling. This reputation, however, was exacerbated by Jeremy Clarkson, who, in 2016, admitted to modifying a Robin for easy rollovers during an infamous Top Gear segment. It's coming up to the first corner now. There you go. Absolutely fine. And so he's amazing. Oh, no, he hasn't. <laughs> W. Chump & Sons, which produces Clarkson's The Grand Tour, actually owns four Robins as company cars. However, although they come from different generations, each has issues from bad idling and fumes, faulty gauges, broken shifters, and failing heaters. Number 2. The Yugo. Hey, what do you want the Yugo? Whether you call it the Zastava Coral, Yugo 45, or Yugo GV, you know it as simply terrible. Based on the 1971 Fiat 127, the Yugo's main appeal was its price, about $4,000. But with just 45 horsepower, it was gutless, and its 85 mile per hour or 137 kilometer per hour top speed made it the slowest car in America, before it withdrew from the market for political reasons. The Yugo also lacked ingenuity, using carburetors rather than fuel injection as late as 1990 featuring bad wiring and, in some models, an engine that would self-destruct if and when the timing belt snapped. Post-1991 quality dropped sharply, with interior pieces fitting improperly and not even matching in color, 
while customers in metric countries received miles per hour only speedometers. Ah, the brake! No, you can't. Before we unveil our pick for most hopeless heap, here are some honorable mentions. The Smaller Dream, 1984 Cimarron by Cadillac. Smaller size, sporty handling. Introducing the Saturn Ion, specifically designed and engineered for whatever's next. Interesting tent. Anything else? That's it. Zero balance, like I said. Number one, the Ford Pinto. Pinto's different where it counts. Once around the block, we'll show you. Rumored to mean small penis in Brazilian slang, the Pinto's name was the least of its shortcomings. Even the Pinto's tragically ugly looks, complete lack of horsepower, bad suspension, drum brakes, and the fact that faux wood paneling was an option could all be forgiven. With the gas tank wedged between the back bumper and rear axle, the car was prone to exploding into flames after being rear-ended. Ford faced numerous lawsuits, and in one case was even charged with reckless homicide. Meanwhile, when an internal memo that favored victim payouts over costly safety recalls was made public, the company was left with a major PR disaster, and the Pinto's reputation would live on in infamy. Pinto, different where it counts. Another better idea from Ford. Do you agree with our list? What's your least favorite car? The Corvair proved its ruggedness in special crash tests. For more quick rusting and oil burning top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Everybody needs a Hugo sometime. This video is sponsored by Bel Air Direct, providing complete car and home insurance solutions.